Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. Oh, I've got new glasses on. I've got new glasses. I really like them. Um, I got two pair, two new pairs of glasses today, both in this sort of like tortoise shell -ness. I keep looking at myself like a vain idiot because I like them so much. Um, these ones are like the thicker frames. The other ones are a bit like my the ones that I had before, but just in tortoise shell and a bit smaller. You can see my eyebrows much more on the other ones, and I'm like, oh, is that what your eyebrows look like? Um, so yeah, here I am with my new glasses on, and they're anti-glare, although I say they're anti-glare, look, that's my window over there. There it is, you can see it in my reflection. My pupils have turned to windows. Um, today, we're not just talking about my new glasses, we're here to do a further edition of my bookshelf tour, focusing on this bookshelf here. Now, I've really trapped myself in it. I've moved my chair out of the way. I've got a table with a stool, beep, 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 a stool, two stools on top of one another and the tripod um, to enable me to do this. And yet still, if I was to stand here, you would merely see my mouth. So let's try it a bit more like that. You can, mm, I want you to see the whole thing though, guys. I don't want you to miss a moment. That's better, isn't it? So this shelf here, beneath my Harry Potter shelf, which we have already done, um, is my favorite shelf. So uh, upon this shelf are only five star books. Um, and ones that I've read this year, ones that I've read last year, ones that I haven't read in a while. No, I think they're all ones that I've read this year. No, oh, did I read that last year? Yes. Did I? Was that the year before? I think that was the year before. Five star books, uh, from the very least since I started BookTube. I've also got a few little accoutrements on here. Number one accoutrement is, I'll get this off, in here I've got a little independent bookshop week tag. <laughs> Look at Minnie trying to get, Minnie you want to be high? Minnie's on the back of the chair. Independent bookshop week um, little flag here, which is actually over now, I should get rid of that. In fact I might well get rid of that. Um, sat upon this little um, cactus. No Minnie! She's trying to steal my hairband from there. I might need that hairband. I'm watching you. Um, sat in this little um, Primark uh, cactus vase, vase, um, that Simon from Savage Reads had, and I was so jealous of it, I actually went and bought one myself. Minnie! I wish I could show you her. She's like, oh, look, I can't see her body. All I can see is her little fluffy paw, like, coming through. So that's there's the accoutrements from there. And also, I've got this amazing stuffed Frida Kahlo screen printed little pillow. Now, I got this from a stall in Whitstable, which is a, um, a seaside town near where David and I live. I often go there, we've vlogged there many a times. Um, and I bought this most recently. I actually thought it was lavender stuff. She had a few seahorses and things there also that were lavender stuffed. And upon my sad realization, this wasn't lavender stuff, but I still very much like it. And I like it being on my shelf. I really think it's cool. Um, she also had canvas bags with this on. So if I, when I go back, if she's still got them, I'm gonna get them there. But onwards the books. So here we all are. Um, I'll start down this end. I feel like I wanna go a bit closer. Do you wanna go closer? I'm gonna pull them out anyway, so it's fine. The first one is Juno Dawson, The Gender Games. I read this this year. It is a non-fiction account about gender from the perspective of Juno Dawson, who was born um, with the gender assigned male. She is now a female. Um, I fucking love this. This is, a lot of these books will be in my favourites video um, for the this year so far, or if not for my favourites video from last year. So I will put both of those in. Um, I'll link both of those down below. This is one I've read this year. It's funny, it's touching, it's amazing, it's got Spice Girls references, Buffy the Vampire Slayer references. Juno is a funny woman and I adored this book. Really, really loved it, been recommending it to everyone. And also, the leggings. Keep going on about those leggings, the leggings. The next is also another favourite of mine so far this year. One, two, three. The next three are, spoiler, um, and that is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Fucking love this cover, look, it's beautiful. Bought my sister and David's mum for, my sister for her birthday and David's mum for Christmas, the Waterstones um, special edition cover, which is like this in blue with some sort of iridescent blueness on it. I think this is beautiful. I won't go on about the storyline. Everyone knows what this is about. It's really bloody good. It's really bloody beautiful. And yeah, read it. The next one is one that I finished recently and adored. Um, this is English Animals by Laura Kay, which I'm beginning to think might be my favourite book of the year so far. This is one where I... What's going on in my car park? Um, this is one that I really, really loved when it happened and um, when I was reading it and now since reading it, when I revisit it in my mind, which I do a lot, I'm loving it more and more every time I think about it. So I really feel like this might be pipping it to my favourite book of the year so far. So this tells the story of Mirka, who is a Latvian woman who is um, working. She's sent to work as an au pair in a 
um, resident, uh, residential home, a rural town um, for a couple um, thinking she's going to be looking after their children. When she gets there, she realises she's not looking after their children. Um, she's actually going to be a taxidermist's assistant working with the husband um, and she forms a wonderful friendship with him but she also forms a romantic relationship with the wife in, this relation, uh, in, the, in the relationship and I just bloody loved it. There's so much in there. The way it's written, it's beautiful. It's amazing in that, to begin with, it feels really strange and disjointed because English isn't Mirka's first language, but by the end of the book, you're totally flowing through it and just so much going on in here. The writing style, the story, the plot, the characters, it just ticked all the boxes for me and I really, really loved it. And the more I think about it, the more I think it might be my favourite book of the year. So fucking read it. <laughs> so the next one is Raymond Briggs's Ethel and Ernest. This is also one, this is a reread. I read this last year and gave it four stars. Read it this year, gave it five stars. Adored it. Um, this is a graphic novel um, all about Raymond Briggs's parents, Ethel and Ernest. And um, when they met, which was very early days, let's go as far as to say it was... 1928, um, when Ethel was working in service. And I believe Ethel, um, Ernest was a milkman, maybe? Maybe a milkman? No, he's not a milkman. He was just on his bike. Um, all the way through their life, and um, marking a lot of um, historical and political changes in the UK. Um, I really like the cosiness of this and find the illustrations very um, nostalgic and enjoyable and... I loved it and I cried and I think it's amazing and I really really enjoyed it. I do think this is probably one for the UK audiences but I still really loved it and gave it five stars. The next one is not a favourite from this year however it is one of my favourite books of all time and that is Americana by Chimamanda and Ngozi Adichie. Um, I read this for the first time not last year the year before and it was my favourite book. It remains to be one of my favourite books of all time. I want to reread this and I might reread this in August. Um, this is um, a novel about a couple, a binze and a femelu. This goes to show how much I love and adore this book because those names just roll off my tongue and all the feelings that they feel for one another all come flowing back to me. Um, they are a couple who are living in Nigeria and Ifemelu, um goes to... Um, goes to study in America. Um, Abinze tries to follow her but gets caught up in um, the immigration system and ends up living as an undocumented illegal immigrant in the UK. Um, this is about their relationship, this is about um, what it was like in Nigeria at the time, what it's like in America for a black woman, what it is like in the UK. It opened my eyes to things I didn't even know existed. I felt so naive reading this book that there was things going on in my country that were awful and I hadn't even thought about before. I adore this and every time I talk about it, every time I recommend it to someone, I just want to read it again and I'm definitely going to reread it next next month because I adore it. Mwah! Love it. My prop Quite possibly my favourite book of all time. Definitely, definitely in the top three. Love it. Uh, the next three are the Dark Materials. Um, I don't want those to fall on each other. The Dark Materials series. I've got like the original ones. Um, I'll do it in the right order, guys. This is Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. And The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. So this one I got bought by, from my lovely friend Dolores. Here it says, To Lauren, my fellow bookworm, I thought you would enjoy this book. It's a fab read. Have a brilliant crimbo. Love lots, Dolores. And Dolores is a girl that I uh, met in my first year of university. We got put living in the same house. She's one of my very dear best friends. Um, and we, we don't see each other so much anymore. She lives in London, which isn't that far away, but very busy lives, but every time I see her, we just pick up exactly where we left off. Like, it's literally like one of us could have walked out the room and walked back in again. Um, and I adore her immensely. And one of, the, not one of the reasons, but just to give you an idea of how in tune with one another we are, she knew I'd love this book and I adored this book. And I can only thank her for bringing this book into my life because it, I loved it and I love the series and they're just so special to me. Recently, I've been listening to the audiobooks of them, um, but I think maybe next year I'll go back to rereading them. Um, Book of Dust is out. Very excited. I picked this up. Hi. I picked this up in Waterstones at the weekend. This is a little excerpt from the Book of Dust. A lot of people saying they don't like this front cover. I actually quite like it. This is just an excerpt. Um, I can't wait for the Book of Dust to be out. So pop these back now. 
one is a favorite book of mine from last year. That is The Vegetarian by Hung Kang. This tells the story of a woman in Korea who decides to go vegetarian, which is almost unheard of um, in Korean culture. Um, it's told from the perspective of her husband, her brother-in-law and her sister. Um, and they all sort of have different views on her vegetarianism and different um, parts that they play in her life. Um, really enjoyed this by Hang Kang. Looking forward to the white book of hers, which is coming out um, later this year. And this I got from um, Armchair Books in um, Edinburgh when I went to visit uh, Jean and Brittany from Under the Radar Books um, last year when Brittany was over visiting. And yeah, really, whenever I hold this, I always think, oh, it reminds me of Edinburgh. Uh, the next one, two are two books that I've read um, this year, um, both rereads, and that is uh, Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. This is the 20th anniversary edition by Picador. I think it's really cool. Um, I really like the bright pinkness of it. This book made me laugh, made me cry, it made me how I love Bridget Jones, and I've read it so many times in my life, and every time I come to it, I come back to something even more joyous in it for me. Um, I just think as I'm getting older, I'm just um, sort of understanding her more and more and I still, I think she's hilarious and I think Helen Fielding's hilarious and yeah love it um the next one is One by Sarah Crossan. This was kindly given to me by Simon from Savage Reads um, when I went up to stay with him. You might remember I had a massive haul video. I will show that, I will link that haul video down below because he gave me loads and loads of books. One of these was these. One of them was this. I'm so excited. I think it's because I'm stood up. I don't normally stand up. Um, and I reread this this year for my online book club and adored it. I loved it last year. I gave it four stars. Something about it this year gave me three stars. It's written in free verse and it tells the story of two twins, uh, conjoined twins, Tippy and Grace. Um, and their journey through um, going into public school and then potentially having to be separated from one another for health reasons. Um, this made me cry, it made me laugh. I just feel like Sarah Crossan really got being a teenager perfectly on top of the fact that these teenagers were unusual compared to your standard teenager. I love this. Brilliant. You've, you will fly through this. This is so, so quick. Um, you will fly through this. It's written in um, verse. But... To get so much across in such a small page is just impressive. This book is just so full of feeling and story and everything. The next one, two, three, four, five. They're Daphne du Maurier books, guys. So Daphne du Maurier is an author that I came to last year, um, having never read any of her work before. And I just haven't looked back. Every single book I've read of hers have been five stars. I had such a stance I thought it was going to fall down and um, that includes these five star books that I'm going to show you here I think Rebecca um, has been my favourite Daphne du Maurier that is closely followed by The Birds which is a short story collection of hers which I think is incredible the best short story collection I've ever read The Bird short story I will stay with me forever and ever in my head and I just think it's fantastic so these are the five Daphne du Maurier's I've got I've got Rebecca these are the Virago Modern Classics editions Jamaica Inn, Frenchman's Creek, My Cousin Rachel, still haven't seen the bloody film of My Cousin Rachel, and I'm molting the birds, as I said before. I love these editions. I love the spines of them. They look great sat next to each other. Um, I've been showing you some ones beforehand um, on, on my unread shelves, um, and I can't wait for them to join these. Hopefully they'll join these if they're five stars, but yeah, love those. They sit there, pride of place. I think they're beautifully, uh, beautifully published books. Super impressed with um, Virago. Well done, Virago. Uh, the next one is another one of my favourite books from last year. It is The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. Um, I actually got my edition that I read of The Tidal Zone from the library when I read it at the time. But the beautiful and wonderful Simon from Savage Reads kindly bought me this. It was shortlisted for the Welcome Prize in 2017, this very year. Um, and this is a signed edition, um, which was very, very kind of Simon to buy that for me. I think he said he bought like something like seven copies of this signed edition. Um, and he was kind enough to give one to me. Oh, it smelled like, I felt like it smelled like chocolate or something then. Um, I love this book. This tells the story of Miriam, a girl um, who um, suffered an episode at school um, when her heart stopped. So she essentially dies for a while um, and then goes to hospital and they can't find out what's wrong with her. It's told from the father's point of view, who is a stay at home father. It's a point of view that I've never really read a book from before. Um, and um, interspersed with that is um, work that the father is doing um, on the re restoration of like Coventry Cathedral I was all I could think I was thinking it's a cathedral it begins with C not Canterbury Cathedral um and really really love this um the only thing is about doing these bookshelf tours where you talk about the books are your favorite you just want to read them all again um and then the next two books I've got are two small little books both from Chimamanda and Ngozi Adichie um this is We Should All Be Feminists um which I 
again, adore. And also, Dear Ijiwali, or A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions, which is a letter that um, Chimamanda wrote to one of her friend's daughters um, explaining why that she should be a feminist. This came out this year on International Women's Day and I read it. I read this one on International Women's Day and then I read this when I got my hands on it. A really important but easily digestible and fantastic feminist text. Mwah, mwah. I, she can do no wrong in my eyes. I adore her. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, just, that's just some of my favourites. These are the ones that I own. Um, obviously my Harry Potters aren't there. They are up there. They're five stars, clearly. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed me standing up. I feel worn out now. I feel like I'm going to have to have a little sit down. David's out for the night. I'm going to have a um, salmon and noodle dinner with broccoli and asparagus. I think that's what I'm having. What are you guys having? Um, and I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video.